Yeah, so Hazelcast is a provider of uh, professional open source software. So we essentially provide a three megabyte jar file that you can download and stick in your class path. Um, once you've done that, you get access to a bunch of distributed data structures like distributed map and distributed queue. And so you essentially get a lot of really nice things for free. Uh, underneath that, what happens is, is that Hazelcast is clustering and these uh, they're forming a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, network. Essentially, it takes any network of JVMs and turns it into a supercomputing class device with symmetric multiprocessing, and it also has a shared memory pool. So you can take a cluster of you know hundreds of computers in your data center and essentially form like one very large distributed computer. So it, it gives a tremendous amount of power of scalability to developers with a tremendous ease of use. So instead of talking to like a hash map, you're really talking to a distributed hash map, but the, you know, the methods are very similar. So you know, developers will find it very easy to work with. Okay, great, thanks. And obviously this week, it's been in the news that you guys have taken on Rod Johnson. How do you think that's gonna affect the strategy of Hazelcast or what do you think the implications for Hazelcast with this new move? Yeah, um, we know his, uh, Rod Johnson is a big believer of open source. He, um, uh, he been through uh, all, all the stages uh, of the open source company, right? So uh, building the community, uh, building the business model, uh, all that. Um, and, um, and, and what was amazing about uh, Spring is, is that uh, they had a giant, I mean, huge community, very successful community. And, and the community is, uh, is a, so we, 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 we think the community is a big part of his cast uh, and, and we should uh, make sure that we, we do it right. And there's a huge community around his cast, right? Yes, because it's mainly because we're uh, fixing uh, a big problem uh, in, a, in a very simple and elegant way. And people appreciate that. So. Um, it's the reason that you're on a mission to monetize the in-memory grid space altogether and replace it with open source. Do you really think this is possible? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of ways of looking at it. So one thing that is really important to think about is what is the maturity of that market? Because when you look at the way that Linux was commoditizing the proprietary operating system market, uh, it happened at a very uh, critical juncture of maturation. So once the platform stabilizes and the features become really well known, then everybody pretty much knows what it is that they want and you can easily roll in and, and you know start to provide an alternative. So what Hazelcast is providing is a uh, essentially professional open source Apache 2 license which is free and open source software that people can benefit from. But what I do want to add is that it isn't just about the money. So we have one very large customer that has an unlimited license to Oracle Coherence, which means that they can deploy any number of nodes they want, and yet they're also deploying Hazelcast because they prefer it. So you know, and and they're paying professional open source uh, for it. So it's you know, it is a matter as well of preference because one of the things that's fascinating about it is that we talked about the elegance of it. So, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that the developer experience is you add it to your class path and then suddenly you have these new objects that you can talk to that are super familiar. So everybody, every developer knows how to talk to a hash map and this is a fully distributed hash map. So it's, it's sort of very simple. It doesn't have any additional dependencies. You just put it in the, there and, and you're ready to go, right? So, so you can take unmodified source and you can just add these things to it and you know, you're off and running in, in, in minutes, literally in minutes. So it's, it's quite an amazing feat. Yeah, it's very exciting. And obviously, speaking of exciting news, um, your news on Wednesday this week is that you guys are launching Hazelcast 3. Can you tell me more about that? Um, what should people be excited about, and what can we expect to see? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's the biggest uh, change uh, after uh, uh, since, since the beginning of the beginning of the uh, Hazelcast project because we learned tons during that uh, four years. Uh, so we we learned what works and what what doesn't, and what people want actually, what community wants, uh, and and uh, so uh, we've been listening to community uh, very careful carefully and. We came to a point where we, we decided to actually uh, rewrite the eight percent of the code, uh, so that um, uh, uh, so so that we uh, uh, we can um, uh, provide the features that the community wants and 
and uh, we make sure that uh, we have a very good base to build other things on. So basically we abstracted clustering and partitioning services so that we can build any partitioned uh, service. Uh, uh, so, and we created an SPI for that. So, so and, uh, uh, and we rewrote uh, the entire, uh, all the services like distributed map, queue, and executor service on top of the new SPI. So that also means uh, any, anybody from the community can uh, build their own custom uh, partitioned uh, serv service on top of the SPI. So, so we learned that uh, even though we are providing a lot of uh, 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 services already, like queuing and messaging and, and sharing state, uh, often we see uh, people need different solutions uh, for, for their specific problems. So we want to be able to give them a chance to build their own and contribute, contribute it back to the community so that everybody, everybody, uh, uh, everyone else uh, uh, can benefit from that. So, um, so, so that means we're going to see way more, uh, uh, more distributed uh, data structures and more distributed uh, uh, processing uh, services built on top of uh, new Hazelcast 3. So you do kind of see distributed computing as very much the future for Hazelcast? Definitely, yes. Uh, so, um, so the mission was to simplify distributed programming, right? And we we see uh, we look at the issue from two sides from the from the data and processing, and and uh, we think that uh, the framework uh, should provide all these services uh, to empower a developer to create amazing scalable applications. Yeah, I wanted to add about distributed computing, which is that in the very beginning of computing, you essentially just had one processor and one memory and all the data and all the processing were all sitting co-resident, right? But eventually they started creating two tiers where there was essentially a data tier and a programming tier, right? So it's like two tier database programming. And then what eventually happened was people started the need to store procedures in the database to bring the code close to the data, right? But this was a mess and like store procedures was a horrible idea and everyone was crying. And so then they made three tier programming where they separated the business logic out to the middle tier. But what's fascinating is, is that this isn't really sensible anymore as we start to get bigger and bigger requirements for handling large memory, large data issues. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is that the data is actually now climbing up out of the database and into what some people call caches, but like really that's a terrible word for it. Because what we're really talking about is fundamental Java object level distribution, which means that the data and the execution is by God, it's an object, it's a Java object, imagine that, and that they're co-resident and that this concept of tiering is becoming very blurred because you're essentially having this fully distributed yeah. construct, yes, that, that basically allows the data and the code to be completely co-resident, right, which is kind of an amazing achievement, and it allows for this balance of power, and it allows for a very nice equilibrium of data and processing, which is uh, what we're trying to achieve. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today, and very much good luck with your release. Thank you. Um, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you and from the community back about it. And we'll see you around the conference. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.